This is a 3D printed ratchet and pull mechanism. One of those deceptively simple mechanisms that shows up everywhere once you know what it is. Like in socket wrenches, spanners and even zip ties. But the real challenge was never printing it. The challenge is in the design. In this video I'll show you the important things you need to get right so you can design your very own. So let's go over the parts you need to get this working. We have the ratchet wheel, the pull, a base to fit these onto and a 3D printed spring to tension the pull. And the whole idea of this mechanism is to allow rotation in a single direction. Oh yeah, and then we have the handle here too. The first part that I want to look at is the ratchet wheel. And the teeth on this seem to be very important because it will determine how far the ratchet can spin before the pull can block it from rotating back. Due to the distance between the teeth, I need to rotate the ratchet wheel much further before the pull fits into the next tooth of the gear. Ideally, this distance would be minimized as much as possible in order to remove the slack in the mechanism, because as you can see, if I rotate it just enough so that the pull doesn't spring down, I can actually rotate it in the wrong direction momentarily, creating a little bit of slack in the system. The second part is the pull here, and this is used as the stopping edge that jams itself in the way of the teeth to ensure it can't rotate the wrong way, but this also needs to pivot when pushed from the underside. So I've made this part quite long and generally thick to handle the force of the ratchet wheel actually pushing into it. Out of all the parts within this assembly, this one works the best and requires the least changes. Something else worth noting is that on the bottom side of the pull here, you can see that it isn't a straight edge, it's actually an arc, meaning the pull itself doesn't have to pivot so far when it is pushed from the underside. And this puts less stress on all of the parts in the system, including the spring, which happens to be the next part. And this does about exactly what you would expect. Tensions the pull and ensures it always snaps back into position to stop an incorrect rotation. This spring could of course be a typical spring, but I've opted for a fully 3D printed design. This spring could use a full redesign because this one doesn't have much give in it. And I believe this is because I've created corners within the internal edges of the spring, which are hard to bend. This has resulted in the part fatiguing after use, and now its springy properties are fading due to the plastic deformation over time. To redesign this, I'd use parallel lines to create the spring, and the turns at the edges would contain radii on both the outside and the inside as I think this would allow for more movement and elastic deformation, meaning it can return back to its original shape after being pulled. Nonetheless, plastic springs are always going to wear fast, so obviously a metal spring would be the better choice for long-term use. The last part, of course, is the base that all of it is mounted on, and this is basically a few poles and pads to hold the parts in position. Something important to note here is that you need to ensure proper tolerancing is carried out between the parts. I've currently got a difference of 0.1mm between the ratchet wheel and the pole that it's mounted to, and this doesn't seem to be quite enough as there's a lot of tension, and I'd probably increase this to a tolerance of 0.2mm next time. So now I know how I'd improve this, why don't we? Yep, a metal spring that works 100 times better and is going to last 100 times longer. Plus, it creates that satisfying clicking over each tooth. If you found this interesting or helpful, then I'm sorry to tell you, but you're probably a nerd. But hey, at least you're watching the video and not making it. Anyway, subscribe.